uh, last weekend, we saw genuinely the best single day lineup of all time. It's Other than maybe Willie's Picnic, yeah, because that one was just legendary. It, it's but. seriously, like, if you were to, before I had heard of this lineup announced, if you would have told me, if you have, like, five artists, or four artists, or whatever, right in order of the ones that would make, like, the best lineup that you can think of right now, it's pretty fucking close to what I would have yeah. done. Yeah. Because, yeah, exactly. Because... So we saw Dallas Moore, Ward Davis, Coulter Wall, Whitey Morgan, and Cody Jinks all on the same day at the same venue. Yes. It was insane. Right in a row. <laughs> and there wasn't – they all got long enough sets because I think they all played for they at least played an hour. hour. At Cody least Jinks an hour. played an hour and a half. Yes. Everyone else played an hour. Exactly. So everyone had a, had a good length set. There wasn't an obnoxious amount of downtime between sets. Uh, the venue was a, a, a perfect size, I think, in terms of yeah. not being too big or not being too small. Yeah. Um, and if you've listened before, or even if you haven't, I'm just going to say it again. In my opinion, Cody Jinx is the baddest motherfucker out there making music right now. He's and, the best single artist in country music yeah, today. A hundred percent. And personally, Whitey Morgan is like a top three guy right now for me because yeah. I fucking love him. I know... I probably know all of the words to all of the songs because I am uh, just absolutely obsessed with them. So those you mean like two, that hot girl that was in front of us, yeah, was a fan. Was a fan of what she was putting out. She um, knew everyone was looking. She put on a show. And then it rained a little bit. Yeah, she really put on a show. Yeah, uh, um, yeah. But seriously, I I love them two so much, and then I love Ward Davis because I started getting into him after starting Paul. to listen to <laughs> listen to <laughs> Cody Jinks and Whitey. Uh, and then Culture Wall, as we've talked about on this podcast after we saw him live, and then even before that, he is fucking phenomenal. And Ooh, then seeing a full band this time was yes, so awesome. Absolutely. And then Dallas Moore, uh, hit, we talked about it on the Top Albums So Far podcast that we loved his album, so getting to see him was also badass. It was just yeah. fucking great, great fucking day. Yeah, so we could really quickly just kind of go through the concerts. Don't want to do, take too long. So first, yeah, Dallas Moore, as we said, we saw him uh, super pumped after we named his album one of the best of the year so far because he's just straight country. He yeah. just, it was, <laughs> they had a dude who only played harmonica just on stage for oh, yeah. belting that shit out. It, wearing a, and, he was wearing a, like a, uh, it was a, a top hat, but like the kind of top hat that Slash would wear, and he had yeah. a cutoff shirt that was badass. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, oh, the other thing about this was since it was five, you know, six with Craig Gertis, who we did not get there in time to see, sadly, because he is good. Yeah. But uh, those six, they're all such similar, like in the realm, the same realm of country music that everyone there knew all the words to like their songs. Exactly. I think, I think the only one, like the least known one there was Coulter Wall. Yeah. Because it's a travesty, but also understandable. Yeah, because the people in the pit, they knew his songs. You could tell they were, you know, cheering to Coulter Wall songs. But everyone else was just kind of like, I don't know who this guy is. Well, the guy, the kid in front of us was just like, how old do you think this guy is? And you're just like, he's 23. And he's like, what? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I, I know this for a fact, but he's 23. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, Jesus, it sounds 60. I'm like, yeah, we, yeah, we know he does. He yeah. gets Coulter Wall. He's uh, awesome. I, I am aware because he's great and I listen to him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, so then Ward Davis came on and this was the highlight of the fucking, not his set per se but he comes out and he just like cody jinx comes out and sings um i don't remember what song he sang with him he what came out and sang a song with him, him. and Why uh can't i remember that as as cody jinx is walking off stage he goes hey is paul back there and cody just kind of shrugs like uh, and he goes tell him i want to sing luke and bach with him and so he's like he walks off and then all of a sudden he's like a few songs later he starts playing luke and bach he goes all right paul's supposed to come out here and sing this with me where are you at, Paul? And, like, he doesn't come out, and then he gets to the last part, the last verse, which is what Willie sings. Or, no. No, I'm thinking of Mamas. Never mind. It's what the last verse. No, it is what Willie sings, right? Wait, what are you on saying? The, on the recording? Sorry. Of Luke I was not paying attention. Yeah, it's the last verse where Willie sings yeah. on the Whalen one, and that's where Paul was supposed to come out, and he just goes, so he goes he's like... Uh, let's go to Lukenbach, Texas. Where the hell is Paul Coffin yeah. or whatever? Yeah, with, I think it was just like with Waylon and Willie and not Paul. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so at the end of the song, just like, damn it, Paul, you didn't come out. And then his next song, like he's playing on a piano and he finishes the song and just goes, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> just like, Paul. I don't know why I ever listened to that guy. 
which is hilarious yeah. too because I do I do love Paul Cawthon, and so I feel like yeah. the only thing that could have made that day better is if he had his own set as well because oh, yeah. I fucking love him. And then uh, oh yeah, because then Paul. earlier in the set he just as he finishes Luke Buck text, he just goes Paul Cawthon, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so Paul Cawthon was there because he's on tour with uh, Ward. Yep. And so, uh, yeah, that was that was a great show. And then Coulter Wall, as we said, he comes on. People didn't really know, but he put on a hell of a show with a, with a full band. So you got to hear yep. Steel Guitar with his songs, which was amazing. Yeah, and fucking and Dobro. New ones. The Dobro was beautiful. <sighs> yeah. And then uh, Whitey came out, and it started pouring during the set yeah. for a little bit. And we got real wet, but it was still a fantastic show. Yeah, and, and then, uh, uh, Jinx came Cody out and Jinx sang, came out during Sinner. Yep, which is uh, the what I tweeted out, which I I got a lot of, lot of Twitter traffic from a tweet this week, so I'm very excited. <laughs> uh, but what Look I tweeted you. out that my like before this past weekend, one of the best, if not the best, show I think I've ever been to is when Cody Jinx and Whitey Morgan played together, and we saw him in Indianapolis, and when. Jinx came out and sang Sinner with him that first time when I had no idea it was coming. One of the greatest yeah. moments of my entire life. Uh, and yeah. so when he came out again to do it, I'm just like, yes, this is amazing. Yeah. I yeah. love everything. And then, and then finally Cody Jinx goes on, and uh, this is how I was thinking of this show. This show is pretty much seeing a new Highwaymen starting. Yes. Just, I would have I would have died and gone to heaven if... They all came out and sang Highwaymen because at one point, Paul Cawthon, Ward Davis, Whitey Morgan, and Cody Jinks were on stage together yes. singing a song, and that was unbelievable. It was I it, was it was fucking a, blown away. It was a fucking beautiful moment. Uh, Jinx is amazing, and so his entire set was just amazing anyway. But then having those guys go out on stage, and and you can tell when they're on stage with each other that, that they are actually really good friends. Like Jinx always yeah. says. You know, when that, whenever someone comes on stage and they walk off, he always says, like, my brother, you know, Ward or Whitey or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and you know that he means it. And and the thing that I thought was amazing, uh, I can't, I don't think I can pull it up fast enough to make it worthwhile. But if you see the picture of the track listing for Jinx's album that's coming out this week, every single one of those songs, essentially, there's two of them that aren't touched by jinx or any of them but every other song on that thing has jinx and then either paul cawthon ward davis whitey morgan or tennessee jet on every fucking one of them so they're all yeah. writing songs together it's yeah. awesome so as we said on that uh that quote that i said during the top 10 is when all four of those guys are on stage they walk off and you know jinx continues his set and he just goes like we sing each other songs. We're bringing back that era of where guys would play together. That like he pretty much shit talks like no one out there plays together anymore. We're gonna play together. We're gonna sing each other songs. We're gonna keep this alive. So that's why I was just like fuck Nashville. We're starting our own exactly. club because it, it, these dudes yeah. are the Highwaymen re reincarnated. Like yeah. they are just the most talented people in country music right now, and they're playing together. Yeah, they're friends. They, they write each other shit. It's amazing. It's it's an amazing thing to witness, getting to see it on the stage that it is currently. And even if they don't ever fucking take another leap into stardom to the way that I think that they all deserve massive you know, appeal across the board, they should be the top four people in the country. Uh, yeah, it, and yeah, <laughs> I, I really feel that way. But then, even like, even if they don't, it's still just such an amazing thing. It's like, this is this is the group of this is the way I think music should be done, and the way touring should be done. When you're with people that you like, it's not just the label said I'm bringing along this guy who's got some fucking mm -hmm. single out that's because doing well. Because we're on the same yeah. label. No, it's we all want to tour together because we like to fucking hang out. We write music together. We play music together. And then even the idea of going out on stage and singing with each other like throughout the whole day, like that is a foreign concept if you only yeah. see stadium shows. Like yeah, they might and... bring them out at the very end or whatever, like once or whatever the fuck. But no, yeah, yeah, it, it's it's a beautiful thing. Well, and yeah, and it. it's also well, going along with that. It's like uh, when Whitey Morgan first came out on stage, well, during Jinx set, when he walked off stage, he goes, "I have traveled coast to coast more times with that man than anyone else. Like yeah. we have toured together so much, and be because yeah, they're friends. They're two of the most talented guys in country music right now, and they're friends, and they play together, and it's fucking. They awesome. They play real authentic music, and God. Damn it! Do they put on a show? They're 
Gah, yeah. I love so them. if if you haven't heard the podcast before, we were we were talking about how it's close for the greatest of all time for a single day because the other one is we saw uh, Willie's Picnic in fifteen with Willie, Eric Church, Merle Haggard, Casey Sturgill. Musgraves, Sturgill, Jason Isbell. Uh, 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 Jamie Johnson was there. Yep. Yeah, Jamie Johnson, Chris Christopherson. Like it was a legendary day, and there are a couple others yeah. that aren't coming to mind right yeah, now. Yeah, that day was unbelievable, and the fact that you know, for me personally, getting to see Merle live before he died, mm-hmm. like that's huge. It was like nine months before he died. Yeah, was, like and that. so yeah. like that's fucking huge, and I will never forget that. But also, just Mama tried just, live. Yeah, but also just the, like, fuck that Saturday lineup that we just witnessed was so good. <laughs> it might go down in history as like one of the best because that's gonna be the, that's gonna be yeah. our. It's it's gonna be kind of our Alabama for five dollars. Yeah, to, to get to see that lineup, it, it's it's insane. You know, granted, yeah. how the you know how much album sales or whatever the fuck you want to quantify artists nowadays. Yeah, sure, it makes sense that they're able to play together and we're able to see them. But the quality of music stacked up in a lineup at a festival that on a later weekend has, like, Kane Brown headlining. <laughs> the yeah, fact the that we got to see this My lineup eyes is aren't amazing. Too far apart. And I saw a yeah. bunch of Twitter traffic and, and online shit about people who, act, who were there tweeting shit out and being like, this is awesome, this is amazing, what a lineup. You know, Whitey's killing it, Jinx is killing it, like all all of this stuff, and I'm like, yeah, it was amazing. I can yeah. confirm it was amazing. 